الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين In a previous segment we spoke about the two pillars of religious praxis the first of which was ikhlas al-niyyah purity of intention In that segment we learned that motives are the primary determinant of the acceptance of our deeds and the reward we receive for them motives at bottom are the why behind an action every deed with the exception of purely inadvertent acts has a why behind it and religious deeds are no different religious deeds not only do they have to have a why but they have to have the right why in order to ensure their acceptance in fact in some cases having the wrong motive the wrong why can turn a good deed into a sin consider the hadith collected by Imam Muslim rahimahullah ta'ala on the authority of Abi Huraira radiyallahu an in which the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam he said that amongst the first people upon whom Allah will pass judgment will be a martyr who apparently fought and died in Allah's cause a scholar steeped in Islamic knowledge and skilled in the recitation of the Quran and a man whom Allah gave vast amounts of wealth who as far as anyone could tell spent that wealth in the way of Allah spent that wealth for the sake of Allah but all of them did those deeds out of ostentation the martyr fought in Allah's cause to be regarded by the people as a brave warrior the scholar learned and taught religion to be admired by the people for his knowledge and the wealthy man spent of his wealth in the way of Allah to be praised by the people for his generosity rather than reward those men for their good deeds and admit them into paradise Allah on the day of resurrection will command that they be dragged on their faces and thrown into hell Brothers and sisters when the why was wrong their deeds which should have earned them Allah's reward which should have been a source of reward became a source of punishment which brings us to the subject of this segment why do we learn our religion what is the why for learning religion why should we study our religion what should our motive or motives for studying be there are many good reasons good motives good why's for studying religion and i'd like to share some of them with you one good why one good motive is imtithal amrillahi wa amri rasulihi that we study in order to fulfill the command of Allah and his messenger to study our religion in order to comply with Allah's command and the command of his messenger the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam he said in the hadith collected by ibn majah on the authority of anas he said talabul ilm faridatun 
ala kulli muslim. He said seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every single Muslim. So a very good reason for us to try to learn the deen is because the Prophet told us that we're, that we're supposed to. The Prophet commanded us to do so. And this is a very good motive, a very good reason for us to study. Another very good motive, number two from the very good wise, is رفع الجهل عن النفس وعن الغير. Seeking to eradicate our own ignorance and to teach others and eradicate theirs. Al Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala, he once said to a group of his students, he said, Al ilmu la ya'diluhu shay liman sahat niyatu. He said, Knowledge, nothing can equal it in terms of the reward it procures for the one who seeks it. Liman sahat niyatu, provided that his intention is correct. So some of his pupils, they ask, وَكَيْفَ تَسِحُ النِّيَّةِ They asked, and how can a person ensure that his intention is correct? فَقَالَ الْإِمَامْ رَحِيمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالِ لِمَمْ أَحْمَدِ He replied, يَنْوِي رَفْعَ الْجَهَلْ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ وَأَنْ غَيْرِ He said he should intend while studying to eradicate his own ignorance and to teach others in order to eradicate theirs. Another very good why or motive for studying deen is hibdu sharia, to preserve the Islamic teachings and to protect them from being lost or forgotten. The more we study, learn, memorize, and teach the religion, the less likely the teachings of Islam are to be lost or forgotten. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He describes Islamic knowledge, the knowledge of the Quran and what it contains, as being something which is preserved in the chests of the learned people, something that they have memorized, and therefore because they have memorized it, it memorized it it is protected from being lost. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي سُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ وَمَا يَجْحَدُ بِآيَاتِنَا إِلَّا الظَّالِمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nay, this Qur'an and the knowledge it contains is verses, clear verses, preserved in the breasts of those who have been given knowledge. And no one belies our signs except the wrongdoers. A fourth very good motive or why for studying is himayat a sharia to protect and defend the Islamic teachings. Brothers and sisters, Islam and the teachings of Islam has its enemies and it is incumbent upon the believers to do their part to defend Islam and to defend its teachings from those enemies, whether those enemies be from without or even within the Islamic community. People without and within the Islamic community who aim to spread misinformation and disinformation about Islam. It is up to us to do our part in protecting and defending Islam from being attacked by these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah will definitely give victory to those who give victory to Him. And what giving victory to Allah means is giving victory to His religion, defending and protecting and standing up for Allah's religion. This is another very good why, another very good motive for us to study. Number five from the motives is Fahmi. Ma'ani ad-deen aw fahm ad-deen fahman sahihan Another very good reason to study is in order for us to understand our religion correctly and to clarify any misunderstandings As Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala he said He said wa mil ma'lum anna kull kalaman 
المقصود منه فهم معاني دون مجرد الفاظه فالقرآن أولى بذلك He said رحمه الله تعالى what means it goes without saying that the intention behind any teaching is for it to be understood its intended meaning to be understood not just for its words to be made out not just for us to understand the words but what is the intended meaning behind the words and he said the quran and the knowledge it contains is more entitled to be understood it is the most entitled to be understood last but certainly not least from the very good motives the very good wise for studying deen is al-amal bima ulim is for us to put what we have learned into practice and i cannot emphasize this why this motive enough allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alladhina atainahum al-kitab yatlunahu haqqa tilawati ulaika yu'minuna bi He says those to whom we have given the scripture they practice it the way it ought to be practiced they are the ones who truly believe in it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he also says ittabi'u ma unzila ilaykum mir rabbikum He says follow put into practice what has been revealed to you by your Lord and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam He told us in the hadith that every person on the day of resurrection will be stopped and made to ask four questions and one of them is about as the prophet sallallahu said wa an ilmihi ma amila bi he will be asked about what he learned and whether or not he put it into practice ali radiyallahu anhu he used to say هتف العلم بالعمل فإن أجاب وإلا ارتحل He used to say knowledge cries for action So if action comes to the side of knowledge when it is called knowledge will remain وإلا ارتحل And if it does not come when called then knowledge will fade away And Aisha رضي الله عنها she used to have a pupil who would come to her periodically and learn from her the religion and learn to her a hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on one occasion she asked him ya bunayya hal amilta ba'd bima sami'ta minni she said oh my son have you put any of what i have taught you into practice the boy responded or the young man responded la wallahi ya umma he said Unfortunately, my dear mother, I have not. I have not put anything that you've taught me into practice. فقالت رضي الله عنها So Aisha, she replied, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her. She said, فبما تستكثر من حجج الله علينا وعليك She said, Oh my son, then why do you continue coming to learn and increase Allah's proof against us and against you meaning that the primary reason why you should learn is to put what you learn into practice if you're not going to practice what you have learned then you're only increasing Allah's proof against not only yourself but against those who have taught you as well this last why cannot be stressed or emphasized enough it is of the utmost importance especially in our times nowadays it is becoming more and more common for muslims to treat islam like an abstract object of study meaning they treat islam like it's an idea or a concept whose reality can be theorized and debated but which has no fixed concrete 
tangible or definitively definable existence. Consequently, we find Muslim, Muslim teachers will teach Islam and Muslim students will study Islam in a way that makes it impossible to put it into practice. Not only because in such cases, putting Islam into practice was never a motive or never a why in the first place, but also because in these types of studies, all opinions, even erroneous opinions, even mutually contradictory opinions about what is right and what is wrong, all of these opinions are admitted. Or because the content, what is taught, how it is taught, and the texts and resources and required readings which are relied upon create doubt about the veracity of Islam and lead to a disinterest in Islam, lead the people who are studying Islam from these types of instructors and in this way, lead them to basically question the truthfulness of Islam, to become disinterested in Islam because they say to themselves, this Islam that I am studying is something which is highly questionable. And this gives birth to total disbelief or can give birth to total disbelief in Islam. How, brothers and sisters, can people who study Islam in this way truly put into practice? How can they be expected to put into practice? Brothers and sisters, if you contemplate this, this should make us realize that we, we have to constantly remind ourselves that actions are but by intentions. There has to be a why for our studying. And that why or whys has to be the right why or whys in order for that studying to be a benefit to us in this world and in the hereafter. As we've seen, perhaps the most important why is to practice Islam. So it does not behoove a Muslim to study Islam from an instructor or to study Islam using a method that will prevent him or her or deter him or her from putting it into practice. But unfortunately, many people do. Why, brothers and sisters? Because for whatever reason they have forgotten or they failed to pay attention to the fact that there has to be a why for studying and the why for studying has to be the right why. This is why, brothers and sisters, it is so important for us to constantly remind ourselves of these basic fundamentals. It's so sad that when we talk about intentions, when we talk about ittiba, modeling the prophet's religious behavior, the two pillars of religious praxis, people, they tune out. They say these things are elementary. These things are common sense. These things are too basic. But these same people are studying Islam in a way that leads them, these same people, perhaps without realizing it, may be studying Islam and even practicing Islam with, with disinterest, maybe teetering on the verge of disbelief in Islam. Why? Because they haven't paid attention to these basic fundamentals. We need to remind ourselves of these fundamentals, remind ourselves, constantly ask ourselves, why? Why do we do what we do regarding our religious deeds in general? And why do we learn our religion in particular? 
هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين